Welcome to Wilded Beard Review. Tonight we're talking about Uncanny X-Men Issue 2 Disassembled Part 2. Now this issue is written by Ed Brisson, Matthew Rosenberg, and Kelly Thompson with art by R.B. Silva. So this is Part 2 of Disassembled, a 10-part weekly story arc kicking off the new Uncanny X-Men series. Now in the previous issue we saw some uh, that day a man, was, a senator was advocating a vaccine that cures mutants. It doesn't really cure mutants. It makes them sterile of the X gene. They can still have children, but they don't pass on that X gene. Basically a way of keeping mutants from, uh, you know, progressing through their family lines. But we also saw Jamie Madrix, the multiple man, show up multiple times, and he seems to be time hopping, doing some kind of funky stuff, uh, shows up a couple places and then disappears, and eventually uh, vanishes in a flash of white light along with that senator and then earlier in issue one shadow cat also disappeared in a white light being very confused um and then they showed up at the end of the book almost in like a like a phantom zone or pocket dimension somewhere else along with a famous x-men a bad guy that i won't spoil here if you haven't read issue one now in this issue we pick up our massive x-men team as they are monitoring a bunch of different weird things going on all around the globe. There's some weird weather patterns, there's, you know, monster attacks here, monster attacks there, all kinds of crazy stuff going on. So they decide they're going to go tackle some dinosaurs and a huge chunk of the team is going there. But before they do, Jean Grey figures out that Jamie Madrix has spawned a ton of himself in, I believe, Kansas, if I remember correctly. So many of himself that the space station can see how many of him are there. So they split the team into two, one going to handle the dinosaurs, one going to handle multiple men, and then the recruits staying back at the X Mansion. So I loved this book. I was... I've been away from X-Men for a long time, and I'm so glad that I have picked up uh, Uncanny X-Men now that it is relaunching. I think there's a lot to love in this book, and not really a whole lot of uh, things to nitpick, uh, at least for this particular issue, too. We'll see how Disassembled plays out over the long haul, all over these 10 issues that we're getting. But in this book, um, one, the X-Men fighting dinosaurs always cool kind of a throwback to uh this all the old savage land stories um the um the dozens of multiple men are really cool they all have different powers um which i thought was very interesting not that's not normally something that uh jamie matrix is known for his powers really just cloning himself and being able to you know make a bunch of himself to fight and things like that so very interested to see how he got those powers it's also of note that he has the m for mutant tattoo over his eye just like bishop does from his alternate uh, the alternate timeline he, that he came from again leading me to believe that he's from an alternate future something like that he also keeps saying I can fix it, I can fix it, I didn't know, and stuff like that. So he seemed to think that maybe he went back in time or forwards in time doing something and something went wrong and he's trying to atone for his mistakes and we're just kind of seeing these after effects and that's maybe also why the dinosaurs are showing up, all those other things like that. Now, this is a huge, huge X-Men team and the front page of this issue and the previous issue, there's literally just a page showing you all the X-Men that are in this book. And I believe there's like 17 different X-Men that are listed there. So with the group of characters that big, the one thing that has to work is that team dynamic. You can have character moments here and there. This one character says something that's very in tune with their character. This character does something that's in tune with their character. But if the characters don't work well with each other, the book kind of falls flat. Fortunately, that is not the case with this book. I loved the team dynamics that are going on in this book with the team that went to fight the dinosaurs, the team that went to fight uh, all the multiple men, and the team of recruits that were left back at the X Mansion. I loved all of it. So much fun in this book, especially talking about character moments. One would be X-23, Laura Keeney. Um, she goes with the team to fight the dinosaurs, and she has a run-in with the T-Rex. And I won't spoil it for you here, but it is absolutely fantastic. One, probably one of my favorite moments I've read in a comic book in, in a while. That one's going to stick with me for a long, long time. 
Now, something else very interesting that happened in this book, um, Beast does not go with any of those three teams. He kind of strikes out on his own, going to um, the medical facility that Kitty Pride's uh, jet crashed into in back in issue one and goes looking for something. It's unclear to me, or maybe I'm just misremembering, if that was the vaccine that the senator was talking about or if that's something else that he's looking for on his own. Not quite sure what the mystery is there, but hopefully issue three and the issue, the further issues will explain that to us. Now, I also mentioned at the top of this video that a big name X-Men villain showed up in issue one. Well, there is a, another X-Men villain that showed up in this one, kind of a classic villain that shows up. So be interested to see in issue three what these villains are showing up to do. And if there is a third X-Men villain that shows up, very interested to see where all this is going. I'm loving this book. Hopefully you're loving it as well. Let me know what your thoughts are on this new Uncanny X-Men in the comments below. And if this is your first time here at the channel, hit that subscribe button for, for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the comic shop.